Hello and welcome back to the Think Like a Lenormand Pro series where we are talking about the five keys to clear, confident Lenormand readings. I am your guide for this journey, Emily Rose, and I'm a professional Lenormand and tarot reader. I also teach tarot readers and the mystically minded to read Lenormand like they're talking to a friend. We're talking about key number two. Two. So if you missed the first key, you'll want to go back and watch that. I have the playlist listed down below here. Also, I announced in the previous videos that I am launching a Lenormand membership website coming very soon. And if you're wanting all the details on that, you're wanting to be the first to be notified, go ahead and sign up for the waitlist at emilyrosedivination.com slash coming soon. And if you don't want to miss the rest of this series, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Make sure to stick around until the end of this video because I'm going to give you a spread that you can do right here, right now with your Lenormand cards to deepen your connection with your deck. So you don't want to miss out on that. Okay, without further ado, let's dig into our second key as part of the Think Like a Lenormand Pro series. Let's dig into key number two, which is to create your own relationship with your cards. In key number one, we talked about building a consistent Lenormand foundation and practice. Now, why do we need to do that? Well, I want you to think of your cards as a person being entity, like a friend, basically. And when you are first getting to know a friend, you tend to just come and have, you know, sometimes short conversations. Maybe you have coffee with someone. Maybe you just chit chat in homeroom. <laughs> you know, that's where a lot of us make our friends is in school, high school, college. And sometimes those friendships last an entire lifetime. And Lenormand is really no different from that. With a new friendship, you're probably unlikely to come into a new friendship and dump all of your trauma in your very first conversation with somebody, right? I mean, you can totally do that. But, um, you know, if you're in a yoga class or something and you go up to a new person that you want to be friends with and you just say, oh my God, I just got a divorce. I'm in this massive custody battle and I feel like I'm, I'm losing it, right? That person might be like, whoa, I don't know you. <laughs> it's just kind of a lot to start with. And you might not feel comfortable sharing that with a total stranger, right? So it's a rapport that needs to be built over time. You know, if you're meeting a friend in a yoga class, you might just say, hey, let, let's go get coffee down the street. And it's a very low stakes way to kind of have some chit chat to build a rapport. And then maybe by the third, fourth, fifth time you're seeing that person, maybe then you talk about your life and you start to share and be a little bit more vulnerable. And Lenormand works exactly the same way. What we talked about in key number one, which is building that consistent Lenormand foundation and practice, that's what you're doing again and again. You're basically having coffee with your cards over and over again in a low stakes way, asking about the day ahead. It's almost like having coffee with your cards every day. And then pretty soon you're going to feel pretty confident asking about those big mama things that are happening in your life that, you know, maybe are a little bit more vulnerable, but you want to be able to trust that the cards are going to give you a clear answer and you want to be able to trust in yourself and your interpretation abilities. So that is why I harp on these daily practices. You can go back and see my timeless month ahead spread um, or take my Lenormand mini course where I teach you a daily practice. Those are really fabulous ways to build your own relationship with the cards and I'm going to teach you one at the end of this video too. This is the way that you build that relationship through that consistent experience and practice and conversations that you're having with your cards. But the most important piece of that is to get the feedback from your daily life. So asking questions about, you know, what may I experience today? Asking questions, what's gonna happen in the season finale of whatever show you're watching? 
asking questions like what's going to happen at the meeting today and then seeing how the cards respond to that question and then seeing what happens in your life and correlating the two together is how you're going to build that relationship because the way that the cards talk to you might be slightly different from how they talk to the next person and Lenormand speaks directly to your question and directly to the querent which is you. What I'm going to teach you in this video is a quick and dirty deck interview. You may have seen this from me before, but if you have a new deck or it's been a while since you've done this deck interview, you'll want to go ahead and do it again because your relationship changes over time with the cards. Or if you have new decks, go ahead and bust out this deck interview to get to know your deck. And also, it's kind of fun to have the cards read you a little bit. So that's what I'm going to teach you here for the rest of this video. For this deck interview, I'm going to be using the Black Salt Lenormand. This is a fairly new deck to me that I have not done a deck interview with, so this is all totally fresh. I do have on my website a post that has all the questions that I'm going to be talking about along with additional examples if you're wanting to see what more cards could possibly mean under these contexts. I will go ahead and link that down below in the description. The first question for our deck interview is asking the deck, how would you describe yourself? So we are basically asking about the deck's personality. What I have here is the cross, the letter, and the dog. So I immediately get, I'm a serious but reliable communicator. I get the serious from the cross, communicator from the letter, and I also have the dog here. So reliable, has your back and your best interest at heart. If you're doing this deck interview along with me, please go ahead and comment below and let me know what you got for your deck interview. I always like to see the diversity of answers and I can also give a little bit of assistance there too if you're looking for some help. Question number two is how would you describe my personality? So we are asking the deck to describe our personality. A little dangerous, I know, with Lenormand, right? <laughs> We're going to get some brutal honesty with this. So I want to know what you got for this one especially. So feel free to comment with that. But here's what I got. I got bear ring lilies. And I'm pretty bullheaded and committed consistent. And I'm also... I also tend to hold on to things for a while. I'm consistent for a long time. Another way you can see the lilies is wise or slow. Um, I'd like to think I'm both of those things, but I really got the vibe here. I'm bullheaded and committed for a long period of time, which is so true. So that's what I got for the second question. Our third question is, how would you like me to interact with you? So we're asking the deck how it wants us to interact with it. What I have here is the clover, the heart, and the birds. I kind of get this as talk to me when the mood strikes you and you're in a good place. So this is definitely saying <laughs> don't come to this when you're in a really dark or, or serious kind of mood. You need to come to me in a, in a good place and when you feel like it, like when the whim strikes you. Our fourth and final question that we have here is what advice do you have for me today? So we are asking the deck to provide us with some advice. I have the mountain, the snake, and the tower. So what I get is get some perspective above your obstacles. Your obstacles aren't what they seem to be. So I'm kind of getting like, get above it, get a higher view. Don't be so in what's going on. The next video, key number three, we are talking about the most important or overlooked thing when it comes to reading Lenormand. I don't hear enough about this in the Lenormand space and I am obsessed with it. So make sure that you are here for that third video. You can go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell, and also make sure to sign up for the waitlist for my Lenormand membership, which is coming very soon. I'm so excited to give you more details about it so, so soon. Head to emilyrosedivination.com slash coming soon to sign up for that waitlist.
Thank you so much for joining me here in the Think Like a Lenormand Pro series, and I will see you back here again very, very soon.